Hey guys, and welcome back to another weekly programming problem. Now, last week we did a maze traversal video, which was a pretty complex problem and saw, uh, it involved a breadth first search algorithm, um, generating a ton of different possibilities traversing through a maze. This one is going to be a bit easier, not too much easier, um, but it does require a little bit of thinking. The actual code for this, I'll tell you right now, my solution is 20 lines and I could probably condense it into about 15 or maybe even 10. So I really encourage you guys to try this problem. I'm going to read through it, explain it, and then go through my solution quickly. Um, but yeah. So anyways, this is the problem we're doing today. Uh, this is again from Waterloo website. So University of Waterloo Canadian Computing Competition. Uh, that's where I take all these problems from pretty well. And essentially, uh, I mean, you guys can read through it, but what it's saying is they have two uh, groups of citizens, one from the town of whatever that is, and another one from Pegland, and they are on tandem bicycles. And essentially, the fastest person pedaling on the bicycle is going to be the one that dictates the speed. So like if I'm pedaling at five miles per hour and someone's pedaling at four miles per hour, the person pedaling at five will determine how fast the bike goes because the faster pedaler is like the slower person's not doing anything essentially. So um, that's something to note. And what it's asking is essentially given the speeds of people from these two cities, how can we match them up? to make either the fastest possible speed or the slowest possible speed. And what I mean by possible speed is if you sum all of the people that are on the bicycles, so all of the speeds of the bicycles, so let's say we have 10 bicycles and each of them are going at one mile per hour, the total speed would be 10. If they're going at two, it would be 20. You just sum all of the bikes that are moving and that's the total speed of like all the bikes, right? So I mean, you guys can read through the problem, but I think you'll should understand it fairly straightforward so let me just go through the input quickly and then we'll get into the solution but essentially uh the input starts off in telling you there's there's two problems that you could be asked to solve one what is the minimum total speed out of all these assignments into pairs so you have to determine how to pair them up so that you get a minimum speed or what is the maximum amount of speed uh, into pairs now the input comes in it tells you what question you're gonna be answering either question one or question two in this case, question one, let's do this example here. And then it's going to tell you how many people you have from each or how many bikes you have essentially. So how many people from each town, which, and these are always going to be the same. And then the next two lines are going to be the people from each city. So the first one will be from demo, whatever that town is. And then the next one will be from Pegland. And these are their speeds um, when they're pedaling on a bicycle. So we can see that we have one person um, pedaling at five, one at four, one, one at four, and those, all those need to be paired with one of the ones that I'm highlighting right now. So six, two or four. So how do we pair them? So we either get the maximum or the minimum speed based on whatever question we're asking. Now, this actually seems like somewhat of a complex problem. Now, let me go through this, um, explanation for output one. It says, uh, what do you call it? Uh, output one, the answer is 12. That's the max or the minimum speed that they can go and it's saying this is how you would pair them up so you're pairing citizen uh with speed five with speed six you're pairing citizen with one with speed two and then four with speed four uh, if you guys actually read through some of these inputs you'll probably be able to figure out the trick for this problem because it's very light computationally what you actually have to do so um yeah that's kind of the way the problem works i hope you understand that now let's go into my solution quickly and talk about how it works now I'm just going to bring up um, this drawing tablet quickly and I'll get just pause quickly while I get my tablet. All right. So I just got my tablet open now and this is actually a really easy problem in terms of the right, the code that you have to write for it. You might've saw it quickly when I, when I went back into my PyCharm window. Uh, but essentially let's do an example of how my solution is going to work quickly. And I'm hoping you guys can kind of see how you would actually approach this problem and make it really easy. So we're going to do, like these are the four, uh, the speeds. So this will be like a, so like town a, and this will be town B. And then we'll say they have like five, um, three and seven as their speeds. So we now, we want to determine, let's start off by saying the minimum speed that, uh, we can possibly go. So how do we do that? What assignments of pairs do we need on our bicycles? So we'll say like pair one, pair two and pair three, so that we get the minimum speed. Well, let's think about this for a second. What we should do to get the minimum speed is we want to max or we want to minimize the amount of large number speeds, right? So for example, what we actually want to do is we want to pair the highest number from B with the highest number from A. 
And then we want to continue doing that. So we're going to pair five with four, which means that we've now eliminated this four essentially from a so that four isn't going to be a speed that would maybe go with three, right? That, you guys will see how this works in a second. So pair one will be five and four. We'll just do a little hyphen or something there. Okay. So now we've eliminated those. So we'll cross those out. Now what's next? Same process. We want to do the highest speed that's remaining from B with A. So we pick the two highest speeds. So we pick seven and we pick three. Okay. So let's do that. So we go seven and three. And then same thing. Now we're going to pick three and two. Obviously there's only two left, but we're going to pick these. And when we do this, we get that. What do you call it? The minimum sum is going to be seven plus five plus three, which is equal to 15. Now let's think if we didn't do it this way. Let's, so let's, let's undo all this and let's go back and try doing it some other way. And you guys will see why this way is the way that we need to do it. Essentially, let's say we just like randomly try pairs. Okay. So what if I try, um, what do you call it? Three with four as my first pair. So B has four, uh, or a has four and B has three. So we write those there and now that's done. Okay. So now we have five and seven, which are going to be paired with two and three, right? So we go five and that can go with whatever. And then seven can go with three. Now, if we add this up, we get 16. That's one larger than the previous one. And that's because we didn't use this seven to eliminate this four, right? Because we want to eliminate the amount of larger numbers. Ideally, we want a speed of three matching with like three. We want three matching with two. We want the largest numbers matching with the other largest numbers so that we eliminate the most amount of large numbers possible. And that's, I mean, there's not really anything other, other way to explain that. Um, then that that's just the solution now for minimum, uh, are, are we doing minimum speed? Are we do, yeah, we're doing minimum. So now we'll do maximum. So for maximum, it's precisely the opposite. We actually want to take the smallest number from one and match it with the largest number from another. And it doesn't matter which one we pick because it'll end up working out either way. But we want to match the smallest number from A with the largest number from B and then continue that process. So we want to match two with seven. So let's do that. Seven and two. We want to match five with three. OK, so we match five with three and then we'll match four with three. So again, this like this will be the largest number from B and um, that would be the smallest number from A. It doesn't matter what what order we do it in, um, but it'll, you'll see how it works out. So we do that and now we get eight plus seven or so we get 16 again, and that's the maximum speed that we can go with uh, these pairs. And that's essentially how that works. Whenever you're doing min, you just want to match the largest numbers with other largest numbers from each set. And then when you're doing um, max, you want to match the largest number with the smallest number. Uh, and that's how that works. So with knowing that we can actually implement this solution pretty easily uh, with some Python code. So let's do that. Um, so let's go here and this is, this is my solution right now. And you could see that actually the first four lines are literally just getting the input. And this is all the solution is, uh, all I do. And I mean, think about this. It, it's pretty intuitive is that if we want to match the smallest number with the largest number, well, it would make a lot of sense to just sort our list, right? Because we actually don't care what order we get our numbers in. So let's just sort them. And then this way, we're going to have a list that'll go from min to max. So it'll go min to max or smallest to largest. And then this one will go min to max as well. So what we'll do now is simply loop through. So for question one, when we're getting what the minimum speed, we want to mac we want to match the max numbers with the max numbers. And those will all be at the end of the list. All the minimum numbers would be at the beginning of the list. So when we do this and we loop through the amount of bikes we have, all we have to do is just add the maximum value from what do you call it? The index I that we're at and the other index I, because those are going to be the two max values at that position or whatever. Right. And that will work for us uh, in terms of matching up like the largest and the smallest. All right. So that works um, for, for the minimum that that's all you have to do for maximum. All I do is just reverse the list of one of, it doesn't matter which one you reverse, but I'm just reversing uh demoge or whatever. And now this way, what's going to happen is you're going to have the max at one end and the min at the other end. So now you're going to be maxing, or you're going to be matching min, max, min, max, min, max, min, max. So you're going to get the maximum possible speed because you're not going to be eliminating larger numbers, which is exactly what we're trying to do here 
uh, when we sort these into smallest to largest, right? So all we do is simply reverse one list and then we just add the maximum from the two indexes and then we print that speed out. Now I'll prove to you that I'm not making this up and this actually works. So let's bring up, uh, did I close that? I think I did. Okay, let's, let's run this. All right, so let's grab, uh, let's put that on the side there. Okay, let's grab some input. So let's try sample input one. So I'm gonna do one, three, five, one, four, and then six, two, four. And you can see that our output is 12. So that this is indeed working. And I've tested on all these inputs and like a ton of other ones. So I know that this solution actually works. Um, but yeah, that is essentially it for this problem. And it kind of shows you that even though this problem is actually designed to be somewhat difficult, uh, if you just think about it in a logical way, you can usually come up with a solution that's somewhat math related or um, just logically makes sense as opposed to having to like loop. Because what you could technically do is do every single possible combination of pairs, which would give you, what is it, like the power set or whatever. Like it would give you a ton of different, it's, it's exponential essentially as you increase the amount of N. And you can see here that N actually goes up to uh, a million at some points, so it could take a long time. But this way, uh, we just found that this makes sense logically how you match them, and that's our solution to this problem. So with that being said, that's been it for this problem. If you guys have any ideas for problems that you wanna see in later videos, or like types of problems, please let me know. Uh, I like doing these kind of problems, but I mean, I wanna do what you guys like. Uh, so with that being said, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.